praise God, praise God, praise God. We thank God um, for this reflection. Mary, did you know, praise God, it could easily well be also used as a Christmas <laughs> carol. But praise God, we are here today because we have known, we, we know what Christ did on the cross for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. And sometimes when we have, you know, when we give birth to a child, um, we have our way in, you know, the way we want this child to grow up, what this child um, should become. But praise be to God. God has got a greater plan. plan. Amen. Praise God. And although Mary um, knew that this child was a special child, did she really know? Hallelujah. I don't think so. She knew what the end result is likely to be, but nothing could have prepared her as a mother mother for what um, her experience um, would be. And so today, praise God, as children of God, um, the same thing applies to us. When we become, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, do we know the road that we are going to take? We know the road is in him, but do we know what it looks like? Praise be to God. And today, um, I would like to share a reflection based on the journey of Jesus to the cross. Amen. Journey of Jesus to the cross. And I just want to go straight in. Hallelujah. And the topic I would like to uh, share with you is the way to the cross a road we must all take. The way to the cross, a road we must all take. Praise God. In this year of wonder, so far I am thinking of my experiences and that there are three things that I need to do or I need to know. Number one, where I am in my walk with God where I need to go and how I'm going to get there. You could say, I am at a defining moment in my life, but I cannot pause and reflect. Sorry, my screen just went a bit funny. And reflect for too long as I might be encouraged to stay longer than I, than I need to. And this is because I have already experienced some defining moments in my life that demand answers. Even if I am not ready to give them, I will only delay the situation, but not necessarily change the outcome. I am reminded on this Good Friday morning that we are meeting to remember the almighty God that made a decision, hallelujah, to send his only son as our substitute to die in our place. Glory be to God. Being born as a human baby, Christ grew in knowledge and favor and knew from an early age, hallelujah, he was about his father's business. In the temple, when he held his own in a debate with the religious leaders of the nation, he was in close contact, hallelujah, with his father at all times. And he knew where he was supposed to be at any given time and put himself there. Yet he found himself in a place of solitude. His disciples were with him often, but even their best intentions and promises were not reliable. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we see that unreliability. Matthew 26 and 40, says, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. 
Could you men keep watch with me for one hour? Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asks Peter. This God life that we are called to, hallelujah, is a sacrificial one that we often push, that will often push us into a place of solitude where we must know God for ourselves. Yeah. Well, the first road that we need to walk is the road of solitude. Jesus, answered, Jesus said to his disciples, stay and pray with me as the weight of the cross he must bear grew near. But they fell asleep. Mark 14, 33 to 34. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and watch and keep watch. He appealed to his inner circle, you would say today, the three, but they too fell asleep. How often do we fall asleep when we need to pray or watch? Christ had to go it alone. And there will be times in our lives, hallelujah, where no one can fully understand what you and I might be going through. We must go it alone. But praise God, Jesus went alone that we will never have to completely be alone. Emmanuel, God is with us, is right here with, with us, praise God. Today, the cross of Calvary is a solita solitary place and we must all experience it. Secondly, Jesus knew where he needed to go. It did not make the pain easier. Sometimes we say, God, tell me what I need to do or where I need to go. The second road we must walk is the road of perseverance. This is key to our journey. This road is often a long process and not an easy one, but it will reward you, hallelujah. Anticipating what was to come, Jesus prayed in Matthew 26 and verse 36. Abba Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will, hallelujah. When we can pray this prayer and completely mean it, then we are becoming dead to self and its desires. And we are beginning to give up all sense of control and allowing God to do his work in and through us. Hallelujah. Today, as children of God, the road, hallelujah, to the Calvary invites us to a life of perseverance in order for the character of Christ to be birthed in us and through us. Hallelujah. The third road that we must walk is the road of courage. When you have walked the road of perseverance, then you will need courage. Hallelujah. Jesus demonstrated courage when he came out of the garden. He was ready to face his accusers 
knowing that he was going to die. John 18 verses 4 to 8 reads, Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, said Jesus. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. Hallelujah. The Bible said he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, yet he didn't open his mouth. Peter was so caught up in the flesh that he took out his sword and chopped off one of the ears of the high priest's servant. Jesus totally left flesh and its desire in the garden of Gethsemane. And dressed in courage, he simply told Peter, put away your sword. And he picked up the man's ear and put it back on. When you make, when you make the cross of Calvary your focal point, it teaches you how to walk courageously. Hallelujah. The fourth road that we need to walk is the road of selflessness and humility. Christ was whipped with many stripes for you and I. Hallelujah. Mocked and insulted for the very people that he was given his life for, and yet he did not retaliate. Isaiah 50, 53 and verse 7 said he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a, like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his sharers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Hallelujah. In order to live a life of humility, we have to recognize that our flesh has to die daily. We have to realize that the life we now live, we don't live in the flesh, but by faith in Jesus Christ who died for us. Glory to God. The fifth road that we must tread is the road of self-control. While Jesus hung there on the cross between two thieves, in pain and agony, thirsty and suffocating, he was still being humiliated. Luke 23 and verse 39 said one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The enemy of our soul has agents everywhere. We should never take our eyes off the cross. We see one thief insulting him. If you are the Christ, why don't you save yourself and us? But there in the midst of his darkest hour, he demonstrated self-control. You and I would be tempted, especially in our pain, to prove ourselves. But he simply looked to the thief 
that asked for forgiveness and said, today you will be with me in paradise. When flesh is as good as dead, you won't have an issue with self-control. Hallelujah. The only place that can take care of self is the cross. The sixth road that we must walk is the road of forgiveness. Glory be to God. Through the cross, we have the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Almost the very last words Jesus spoke on the cross were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they have done. Unforgiveness will keep you in prison with the person who offended you. Matthew 6 and verse 15 reads, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Forgiveness does not just release the person who offended you, but it also releases you. The seventh and final road that I want to take you on this morning is the, the road of love. Hallelujah. All this journey is encompassed in the message of love. The unconditional love of a father who loves us so much with a love that our human minds cannot comprehend. Glory be to God. John 15 and verse 13. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Hallelujah. But we must embrace this love and receive it by faith from our loving Father. In conclusion, this Easter reminds me of this, that when you are in a solitary place, you are not alone hallelujah you need to persevere and be courageous by maintaining selflessness and humility you will develop self-control which will help us hallelujah to forgive others and never forget the love of god conquers all Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I said the love of God conquers all. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. While you're um, in the comfort of your own home, it's right. Um, I believe that we can take a moment there to just thank the Lord that the love of God conquers all. And it's a continuous love. It's an enduring love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a love that will never fail and a love that will never let us down. Praise be to God. During, praise God, the preparation of, for, for Passover, in the Jewish homes, the father would hide a few pieces of leaven, you'd call it leaven, mixture leaven bread, which is a yeast-based mixture around the home. Then the family has to thoroughly clean the entire home, including pots, pans, the bedroom, the bathrooms, etc. The father watches to see how many of the leaven lump, lumps he has hidden are found? If needed, he gives some clues until all of them are found and removed. 
the leaven mixture that would raise the dough to make bread is a symbol of how pride puffs us up and offends God. We must purge the sin from ourselves before we approach the Almighty for mercy. Today, the cross of Calvary, hallelujah, is to eradicate sin and its effects. The songwriter said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. But, hallelujah, Jesus washed it white. He washed it white as snow. Glory be to God. Because Jesus paid it all, that's why we are here today. Mm. Hallelujah. We are free, hallelujah, from the stronghold of sin. Glory be to God. Graham Hendricks also penned the song, What Love Is This? My Lord, what love is this? that pays so dearly that I, the guilty one, may go free. Amazing love, oh, what sacrifice, the Son of God given for me. Praise be to God. Today, as we come, praise God, and reflect on these seven roads, that I thought of leading to the cross, hallelujah. I want us to remind ourselves that although it's not easy, hallelujah, we are not alone today. And so at this time, there might be situations in your life that you are going through. Maybe it's self-control, Maybe I need to, need to persevere. Maybe, you know, um, you know, there's just so many different things that you can, be go you can be going through at this time. I want us to join pastor as he leads us into prayer. Amen, saints, what a good message for us today. You see a, a special couple of words in the chat, special scuffle to help us remember this message. Where you look at the capitals, you see the S for solitude, the P for perseverance, the SH for selflessness and humility, and then the SC for self-control, the U, uh, just reminding you of the word forgiveness, unforgiveness, the bad thing, and the L for love. So remember, we're in a special fight, <laughs> special battle, call it a special scuffle and you remember the path to the cross. Let's, let's pray into this word. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that we are in the Lord's army, yeah. and the Lord is leading that army. Jesus. Therefore, it is a victorious battle. There may be casualties, there may be losses, there may be uh, even death, but death cannot stop us in this battle because we serve the Lord of life, the one who is the resurrection and the life, and he can just raise us back up uh, to eternity. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, that although this battle is at times a, a lone fight, that there's nobody else to stand with us. Sometimes we have to stand on our own in that place of solitude. That's where the battle begins, because we have to first conquer the old man, let the old man be killed and disposed of in order that Christ can live in us. So help us to persevere through that solitude, Lord, that we can continue and learn, oh God, the selflessness and humility that you desire of us, that we won't just be considering ourselves, but Lord, we will be like Christ, who came to give his life a ransom for many. And Father, moving in through this pathway, we come to a place of self-control. It is, oh God, the end of the fruit of the Spirit. That's what you desire for us that we are under your control and that we are able to control ourselves, that we are not out of control. And we pray we'll grow each of us to that place of maturity, Father, that 
we can release others who have harmed us. God, we can forgive them. We can even love our enemies and pray for those who despitefully use us. Help us to look to Christ, who is our perfect example, who is the role model of what it takes to win this battle and to be victorious. And so, God, we pray today as we look at ourselves and consider ourselves and our own shortcomings that are so often there, maybe even today, Lord, we've messed up somewhere already. And so we pray, God, forgive us, pardon us, strengthen us, help us, lift us, oh God, from a place of despondency and help us to see that we are more than victors through Christ who's loved us, that if we would rely on his strength and forego our own weakness, we will win this battle. And so, Father, we pray today, Help us, oh God, to remember what Jesus has done for us and to actually take comfort because he has won the victory in our behalf. If we would just hold to his hand, the victory will be ours. We pray for our world, Lord, where there is so much conflict and bloodshed, where there is so much evil and greed. God, we pray that on this most holy of days, that people will look into their own lives and see that there's a better way. We thank you for every Christian who stands and models the Christ life in this world. We pray for those, oh God, who are in danger of their lives for standing up for the faith. We pray you'll strengthen them. We pray you'll be with them. We pray, Lord, that they will be faithful to the end if necessary. Lord, that they will not recount uh, or recant their faith. But Lord, they will stand for you. And oh God, their testimony will stand as a witness to the power of Christ in this world. Father, help us today and allow us to enjoy a wonderful Easter as we reflect on your goodness towards us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.